if you are a nerd like me, you often have to skip stage three because you lack the intuitive empathy with others. Because in order to resonate with a group, you need to have a quite similar architecture. And if people are wired differently, then it's hard for them to resonate with other people and basically have um, empathy, which is not the same as compassion, but it is a shared perceptual mental state. Empathy happens not just via inference about the mental states of others, but it's a perception of what other people feel and where they're at. Can you not have empathy while also not having a similar architecture, cognitive architecture as the others in the group? I think, yes, but you have, well, I experienced that too, but you need to build something that is like a meta architecture. You need hmm. to be able to embrace the architecture of the other to some degree or, oh, or find some shared common ground. And uh, <laughs> it's also this issue that uh, if you are a nerd, normies often, so people, say neurotypical people have difficulty to resonate with you. And as a result, they have difficulty understanding you uh, unless they have enough wisdom to to feel what's going on there. Well, aren't we, isn't the whole process of the stage threes to figure out the API to the other humans that have different architecture and you yourself publish public documentation for the API that, that, that people can interact with for you? <laughs> isn't this the whole process of socializing? My experience as a child growing up was that um, I did not find any way to interface with the stage three people, and they didn't do that with me. So it took did you me. Try? Yeah, of course, I tried it very hard, but uh, it was only when I entered a mathematics school at uh, ninth grade, where lots of other nerds were present, um, that I found people that I could deeply resonate with, and had the impression that yes, I have friends now. I found my own people, and before that. I felt extremely lonely in the world. There was basically nobody I could connect to. And I remember um, there was one moment in all these years where I was in, uh, there was a school exchange and it was a Russian boy, um, kid from the uh, Russian garnison station in Eastern Germany who visited our school. And we played a game of chess against each other. And we looked into each other's eyes and we sat there for two hours playing this game of chess. And I had the impression this is a human being. <laughs> he, he understands what I understand. We didn't even speak the same language. I wonder if uh, your life could have been different if you knew that it's okay to be different, to have a different architecture. Whether like accepting that the well, interface is hard to figure out, takes a long time to figure out, and it's okay to be different. In fact, it's beautiful to be different. It was not my main concern. My main concern was mostly that I was alone. It was not the, so much the question, is it okay to be the way I am? The, I couldn't do much about it, so I have to de had to deal with it. But um, my main issue was that I was not sure if I would ever meet anybody growing up that I would connect to at such a deep level that I would feel that I could belong. So there's a visceral, undeniable feeling of being alone. Yes. And I noticed the same thing when I came into the math school that I think at least half, probably two thirds of these kids were severely traumatized as uh, children growing up and in large part due to being alone because they couldn't find anybody to relate to. Don't you think everybody's alone deep no. down? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All also, right. I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm not Fair alone enough. anymore. I, it took me some time to update and to get over the traumata and so on, but I felt that in my 20s, I had lots of friends and I had my place in the world and mm. I, was no, I had no longer doubts that I would never be alone again. Is there some aspect to which we're alone together? You don't see a deep loneliness in, inside yourself still? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that's the nonlinear progression through the stages, I suppose. Mm. You caught up on stage three yes. at some point? so we uh, were at stage four. And so basically yes. I find that many nerds jump straight into stage four, right. bypassing stage three. Do they return to it then later? Yeah, of course. They, sometimes they do, not always. Yeah. The question is basically, do you stay a little bit autistic or do you catch up? And I believe you can catch up. You can build this missing structure. Yeah. And... Um, basically experience yourself as part of a group, learn intuitive empathy and develop the sense, this percept, perceptual sense of feeling what other people feel. And before that, I could only basically feel this when I was deeply in love with somebody and we synced or... So there's a lot of friction 
to feeling that way. Like it take to, it only with certain people as opposed to it comes naturally. Yeah. It's frictionless. But um, this is something that basically later I felt started to resolve itself for me huh. to a large degree. What was the trick? In many ways, growing up and paying attention. Meditation did help. I had some very crucial experiences um, in getting close to people, building connections, um, cuddling a lot in my student years. So really paying attention yeah. to the, what is it, to the f feeling another human being fully. Yeah. Loving other people and being loved by other people and Simple. building a space in which you can be safe and can experiment and um, touch a lot and be close to somebody a lot. And over the, uh, that over time, basically at some point you realize, oh, it's no longer that I feel locked out, but I feel connected and I experience where somebody else is at. And mm -hmm. normally my mind is racing very fast at a high frequency. So it's not always working like this. Sometimes it works better, sometimes it works less, mm -hmm. but I also don't see this as a pressure. It's more, it's interesting to observe myself um, which frequency I'm at and mm -hmm. uh, at which mode somebody else is at.